since the last time we filmed between 2015 and 2017 there's been a lot of changes. What is so special about this complex now is we've not only uncovered new tunnels and we've uncovered new components in the whole landscape but it's doing something else. It's playing a bigger and bigger role in terms of bringing everybody together. We're understanding as more scientists are coming and are drawn to bring their skill set from across, across all over the world, they're contributing to a greater understanding of the possibilities of what this landscape means. It's a huge complex that's um, talking about communication, not just across our planet, but interplanetary communication. We have specialists from all over the world talking about these possibilities, how energy can be transmitted, scalar waves, all these different aspects that are not normally discussed or they might be discussed in one place, but now it's providing a platform through which these scientists can come together. Bosnian Pyramid Project. 12 years after the discovery, made in 2005, it has become the most active archaeological site in the world. The Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, the biggest on the planet, the most precise orientation to the cardinal points on the planet, the best quality concrete on the planet, the oldest pyramids on the planet, the most extensive underground tunnel network on the planet. The energy aspects also became very famous worldwide. On the top of the Sun Pyramid, we've measured several energy phenomena. Electromagnetism, electrical field, ultrasound, organ energy. They've been sending um, equipment up with drones and they're about to take it up with balloons. So that we're now discovering uh, the different types of impact on energy fields, electromagnetic fields, different types of sound waves, different types of frequencies that are going much, you know, not just what we're predicting it to do, but we're actually exploring what happens when we go higher up above the pyramid. Is it getting stronger? Is it getting weaker? What's it doing? How is it interacting with our ionosphere? Electrical fields. They go narrow, four and a half meters. They expand at 21 meters being the strongest and the widest, coming back narrow again, four and a half, go back expanding, come back narrow, and then going to the universe, scalar waves. We have a huge excitement about this because scalar waves are much quicker than the speed of light. And the interesting thing, the orientation of the scalar wave is towards our sun. Noon time, south, afternoon, southwest, evening, west. As the sun moves on horizon, the scalar waves move towards the sun. What does that mean? It seems there is a communication between our planet through the pyramids with our sun, which is central cosmic body in our solar system. Probably the waves using the sun as the cosmic gate, traveling further to other solar system, to center of our galaxy Milky Way, and then from there to other galaxies towards the center of the universe. We've also had a lot of people looking up more to do with the sacred geometry, the layout between them, the distances between some of those, and very significant in terms of drawing in energy and transforming it. The Bosnian Pyramid Project has opened the doors for engineers, for physicists, for electrical and sound engineers to do a series of measurements on the pyramids, at the base of the pyramids, in underground tunnels. Teams from Croatia, Serbia, Finland, Italy, Germany, United States and other countries have been measuring with their scientific instruments a number of energy phenomena. Electromagnetism, magnetism, electrical field, ultrasound, infrasound, organ energy and other phenomena, concluding that especially on the tops of the pyramids, we do have energy beams. And all of these principles which use Tesla and his technologies, we can find here. Why? Because principles are the same, uh, uh, used by nature and by Nikola Tesla. Why? Because this is a resonator. This is a resonator but multidimensional resonator which amplify the energy flow which exists and amplify them, filter them, etc. etc.
same principles. Tesla uh, has in his machines, he applies the same principles which nature uses here. Tesla applies in his machines. Energetic form which is, which is above the pyramid, which we measure and verify uh, via strength of electric field, uh, that, uh, that uh, energetic form has uh, ellipsoidal shape. Uh, with the uh, maximal energy density in the center of that uh, ellipsoidal object, and uh, we can call that object uh, scalar field. And that's going 20 billion times faster than the speed of light? Yes, but that's a uh, low limit of that uh, energy forms propagating velocity because uh, they can be uh, much higher <laughs> than that great number is. We can say that uh, using uh, torsional fields and uh, longitudinal uh, electrodynamic vibrations for, for communication, we can reach unlimited velocities, which means that you can have communication between uh, great distances immediately. You have no to wait uh, signal to came to us. You immediately have results. Is, un is unlimited the same as infinite? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's our reality. It seems that the Bosnian pyramid builders established a base for the cosmic internet and the information would go both ways. Since the scalar waves are much quicker than the speed of light, the transfer of information and the transfer of energy was immediate. And that's the reason why we claim that the Bosnian pyramid builders were much more advanced than us. Because this is technology that we do not have today. And this, this pyramid is working as an energy machine right now? Uh, always. Because uh, you, uh, you, not, you don't need to produce energy. You, you, you uh, have no... Uh, you don't need a, a, a machine which produces energy because you have energy all in all the space and you have uh, energy flows between sun, galaxies, planets. So we wouldn't say that the pyramid is uh, producing energy but channeling energy. Uh, channeling, filtering and amplifying uh, cosmical energetic flows. And also earth energy flows, Moshe. Yes, of course. Dobro. And in the case of the Romney tunnels, first of all, these one of the reasons why mainstream archaeologists and, and scientists, geologists, they look at these pyramids and they don't think that they're man-made is because they, are, they don't have a background in skater physics, so they don't recognize that the structures within these things are exactly what you would do if you want to build a skater energy device. So when you take uh, a material like organite, organite is simply some kind of a non-conducting resin like fiberglass or whatever, epoxy, and you put metal particles in it, and those medical particles are close together, you're going to get some of that Casimir effect. You're naturally going to get these particles getting close to each other and creating that Casimir effect, which creates scalar waves. And so in the case of these pyramids, when you've got this huge scale of a mountain-sized pyramid and you've got these pebbles, yay big, and they're all packed closely together with clay around them. Clay, by the way, is very high in monoatomic minerals. Monoatomic minerals also are like little scalar antennas at a microscopic level. They also exude scalar energy. And so, so you've got this medium, like the resin in organite, around all these pebbles. And that combination, the, the proximity of those pebbles, creates the Casimir effect. The clay itself is exuding skater fields. And so when you put that under pressure, that amplifies it. Because there's something called the piezoelectric effect, which basically is you smack a piece of crystal, particularly quartz, and it'll shoot out electricity. This is how gas grill igniters work. You know, when you pop that little button on a gas grill and it smacks something and you get a spark that ignites the grill, that's the piezoelectric effect. You're smacking a piece of quartz that's connected to some wires, it shoots out a spark. So instead of 
hitting the crystal if you just squeeze on it. That creates skater waves. That's part of the piezoelectric effect. And scientists don't really know. I mean, they have all these ridiculous explanations for what creates this piezoelectric effect, but they don't really get at the root of it. The root of it is that the reason the piezoelectric effect occurs is because these minerals contain these superconducting monoatomic elements. And in, in, in rocks, they're not always superconducting. They, under special circumstances, they are. So when you, but at any rate, when you squeeze on these rocks or crystals, instead of creating electricity, it creates skater waves. So you've got this giant mountain with all these pebbles close together, surrounded by clay, which is all high in monoatomics. And then you put it under pressure from the weight of the pyramid and the soil weighting down. You've got a massive skater wave generator. And then when you form it in the shape of a cone or a pyramid, not only are you going to create a local field, and in the case of these these mountains, that, or, you know, these pyramids are mountain-sized, they can reach out hundreds of kilometers with these fields. But they also send, if they're shaped like a pyramid or a cone, they will send a vortex, a double helix vortex, up through their tip. And you can actually see and measure these with uh, like Kirlian photography if you do it on a smaller scale. Engineer Goran Marjanovic from Serbia. Also, he noticed that energy beams in a tumulus in Vratnica is oriented towards the Sun Pyramid. The one on the Pyramid of the Moon, again, towards the Sun Pyramid. Then we have the Bell Tower. And that beam also is moved towards the Sun Pyramid. It seems that they've been doing the support to the biggest pyramid on the planet. So that pyramid can send its own energy beam to the universe. However, it does not exhaust the purpose of pyramids. What is the most valuable, most precious thing in our life? It is our health and prolonged life. Now, we know, not only based on thousands of testimonies, but also on a medical study that we performed in the fall of 2016. 30 parameters before the tunnels. We were taking the blood samples and urine samples and after the tunnels, seven days after, 14 days after, showing that all the parameters were improved. When you go inside of one of these pyramids, you've got a high concentration of, of a skater field. And because of the harmonics, the natural harmonics built into the atomic structure of the rocks that they're composed of, and because of the dimensions of the pyramid itself, it's going to create skater fields and skater waves of frequencies that are very beneficial to living organisms. It's been shown in the pilot study that there are some quite incredible changes just from spending just an hour in the tunnels. There is a significant difference in the body responses. We've been having so many reports that are um, from volunteers, from people that have visited here, somebody with Lyme's disease, there was a French lady and she has overcome that, she puts that down to being in the tunnels. There are many different instances, people overcoming depression, people overcoming breathing difficulties. The local people are now coming in regularly and we have one beautiful little old lady um, and she was really struggling quite a bit before but now she said she's reducing her medication she's coming in the tunnels more regularly and she even made a statement in Bosnian she said if I'm on if, if something happens to me I'm going to tell the ambulance to bring me to the tunnels rather than the hospital because she is coming twice a week regularly once to the tunnels once to Ravna too in the park and she really believes it has transformed her life and is helping her to maintain um, a good level of health in her old age and she said she's very different to how she was before she swears by it she said come rain or snow she's not going to miss her time in the tunnels and the, and the park exposed to the pyramid energy you improve your health it does not matter which individual health challenge you have. To me it's more aligning like both sides of the brain. 
sometimes I feel like my my uh, the the right side of my brain on my head is more dense, like in a hole, like in a in a frame or something like this, just not very free. But now it starts to free up again and come into balance with the other side of my brain, with the left side. So I can, I think it can also allow to something, some energy, so just whatever it is to, to come in with, in me. My name's Donna. I'm from Australia. Uh, I arrived in Bosnia three, three days ago. And today has been my first day in the tunnels working as a volunteer. How do you feel? You were just in the tunnels 10 minutes ago. How do you feel? I feel fantastic. You know, a day, a day shoveling um, dirt and rubble and whatnot, and, and, and I feel fantastic. I've had, um, I've had ongoing chronic sinus problems for um, four or five years, and um, today my sinuses are clear for the first time, for the first time in years. I feel so calm, I feel so happy, relaxed and just humble and thankful. Have you been in Ravne Tunnel today? Yes, I have been there maybe for half an hour, but I'm going back. Do you feel any fear in these tunnels? No, I don't. I feel because I have a little bit of, uh, how do you say it, claustrophobia. Phobia, but I don't feel that inside of there. It's uh, just wonderful. It's like an adventure to walk in those tunnels. Well, the experience is very positive because I am Parkinson's disease and I'm totally relaxed, no stress, no tremor, full of energy, absolutely not any more uh, non uh, movement or non tremor uh, results. So I feel uh, with uh, additional energy very, very special. I feel it very, very relaxed and uh, one year difference between the first visit last year and second visit this year. I was able to drive the car from Ljubljana or from Klagenfurt to Visoko without any stop, without any problem. So you went to Ravne first time last year and then second time this year? Correct. Kogosizovic, what's your name? My name is Rastko Chop. How long have you had this uh, Parkinson's disease? Very few years. Do you know why you have it? Yes. Stress. Because my son passed away in a car accident and this has made a very, very negative energy to my body. Mm. And now I'm recovering. I believe in Schumann frequency, I believe in 28 kilohertz frequency too, because I'm an engineering person. So for me, this is technology and vibrations. It's like Nikola Tesla says that everything is vibration. Also, the medicine is vibration. And if you take a correct medicine or correct vibration, you will heal yourself. Your medical doctor accepted the fact that these frequencies in, in the in Ravne Tunnel Labyrinth healed your Parkinson's. Well, he accepted that, that it helped to heal the Parkinson's disease. So it's one of the factors. And coming to the tunnel means that I fill my body with energy, with positive energy, with life energy, and this is what I like to, to do every time. And the tremors from the Parkinson's, are, are they still there a little bit, no, or are they...? Absolutely, they dis disappear. Look it. No tremor. The voice is also recovered. The smell is recovered. The voice? Yeah. You mean your voice was trem trembling before? I was losing the voice, like, uh, totally without voice. Oh my gosh. So I was not able to pick up the phone. Now I can sing in the opera. <laughs> <laughs> so also the face mimic is, is a different. Because the Parkinson's disease patients has a stone face. I can smile now. I am happy. I can show my expressions. <laughs> And that's important when you are in the in the uh, in the company of the nice persons. Then you want to share your energy with other people and to take it and to give it back. And your friend is also from Slovenia. Yes, I'm also from Slovenia. Kaksizovich. Alois. And what's happening? Why are you here? 
uh, actually Rast Kokomi last year and suggests to go together. We have a special uh, magazine in Slovenia which is named Aura and uh, immediately there uh, Mr. Osman Agic uh, started exploring, it was already there, uh, writing, his writing and explaining and I sometimes I'm writing this mag magazine and starting to listen and when uh, my colleague Rastko asked me if I go together with him I said okay I will go immediately. <laughs> Super and how long have you spent in the tunnel today? Uh, were you in there for an hour or so? Or? No, 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 but about an hour, maybe 45 minutes, something like that. Dobro. And do you feel anything different? Yeah, sure, sure. I have a problem with my left legs and after five minutes immediately when I come in the pain from my left leg disappear. What kind of pain do you usually have? I usually just have, if I'm tired, uh, it is just only this one pain. I usually I'm quite okay. But in your knee or your foot? Yeah, or? yeah on, on the, it's between the knee and the foot. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, I'm thinking, okay, I will go inside and uh, I will count. Uh, when we start, uh, stopped, uh, the pain will stop it. And it was really, really five minutes and uh, immediately the pain disappeared. So you're walking on this leg no, that no, normally no, I hurts? I'm just sitting on the, the Megalith K2, the ah, biggest Megalith. Okay. Uh, sitting and uh, watching around and a uh, little meditate and the pain um, immediately disappeared. This is, this is really, really, really strange. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not just the Schumann frequency or, uh, or the ultra, uh, ultra frequency sound. It's something uh, much more than, uh, than this. I, I will say the miracle experience. <laughs> mm, miraculous experience, we yeah, would say. something like that. Yeah. Wow, because you sound like you really are happy that this happened. Yeah, I'm really, really happy. And, and uh, now, do you still feel the pain or no? No, no, I don't feel the pain. You don't feel the pain? No, no, no. no, no, no. So, uh, so... Uh, and how long has it been since you've been inside? As I said, uh, 45 minutes to one year, and hour. Then, uh, and then... Enough. From then it till now is what uh, half an hour after that or something. Well, let me check. It's about uh, yeah, it's yeah more half hour more for okay. Yeah, something so like it's been that. about an hour and a half since mm. you mm -hmm. were at Megalith K2. I want to feel the Parkinson's not being there. It's gone. Wow. So go there, sit in the tunnel, relax, meditate, and be well and a good person. Write your name below that. Can you write your name and your email address when you uh, have Parkinson's uh, tremors? Well, very difficult because the letters to the end were smaller, smaller, and smaller. Now they're equal. Now they're equal. That's good job. I'm coming back to the Bosnian pyramids after two years. Um, as it is with the energy of the tunnels. I have always felt incredible and just coming here always makes me feel like I'm returning home. Today is new moon, tomorrow is my birthday. I feel this sense of renewal and it's all amplified by being here at the Bosnian pyramids. Um, and that sort of Shambhala type feeling which it's almost like we're living in another dimension within the 3D world and whatever I feel, I feel accesses parts of my, my being that I haven't, you know, that maybe I'm not completely in tune with when I live in London. And so coming out here, I feel like I'm expanding. Everything is coming from the heart. The food is beautiful. The people are beautiful. The land is beautiful. And of course, Ravne, the pyramids, you know, it's, it's really overwhelming on many levels. And it always takes me a while to compute and process when I get back to the UK. But a week later, I sense that there's a new energy that's about me. Uh, there's such a huge labyrinth of tunnels underneath, which are all interconnecting this site, that it's almost like a huge spaceship on some levels. I definitely felt today just a more rapid sense of well-being. Because when I've come over the last two to three, four years or whatever, it takes a little bit of time. And now, within five to ten minutes, I'm instantly feeling rejuvenation. I'm instantly feeling that connection. I'm instantly feeling that clarity. And to me, that's really important. And I so want to tell everybody around the world, you must pay a visit here. 
it is it is a, a wonder of the world that has not been put on the map yet and everybody will benefit from it and everybody's subconscious memories will be triggered in some way shape or form even if you can't identify what it is you will feel something very deep that will anchor you connect you with the earth that we live on and also very much help you to open and channel energies that will help you with your life and activate um, your centers especially your pineal which is really important I started to feel much more clarity with images that were coming in and I had an empty mind I wasn't like trying to fabricate something I just sat but I could feel things and see things. So maybe over the years, visiting quite a lot has activated that in me. Or maybe now, because of the work and all the vibrations going on with the concerts that Samir is organizing, there is a different frequency here which we can attune to quicker. There isn't a pyramid complex like this. Bosnia, visit. It's got to be part of your blueprint for existence. The Ravna 2 park that has been created really is in synergy with nature. What is so special when we come to this park is every time I come I feel happier and happier because it's breathing in life again. The school children are coming and using the park and it, what's so beautiful is I was sat watching one day and there was a little Muslim girl with a headscarf on and she was playing with a girl that had come from uh, one of the European countries and they were walking around a little spiral together and it was so beautiful to just see this natural cohesion between people without any, any, any artificial divides. So it's a really important space of connectivity. It is really becoming active because my understanding is the more I connect with this landscape over the last two years it's changed my life. The synchronicity starts to flow in your life. You don't just visit it, but you go away and it continues to work. Every single place I go to speak or I work at or I stay in a room with people in, in, when I'm at a conference, it links me back to Bosnia. And now it's a growing role for me here, but also it's bringing me back to this heart consciousness that is here. People are now returning from all over the world. Also, Bosnians that have been spread all over the world during the war, I'm seeing them start to return. And actually, I think part of this transformation is happening partly because this consciousness that's lying in this valley is starting to really activate and become really strong. <laughs> one, one time I did a bet. One time, and that tea bucket arrived until the end of the line. What do you think, Amanda? Be around. Come on! Hey, guys. This is to Antonio, uh, the, <laughs> the previous front line, you know, bigger. It's a long line of volunteers who have worked here, and you guys are the latest. It's July 19th, 2017. Jakub, you're here on the front lines of ancient history, digging out soil and construction clay from the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Yeah. What do you find when you, when you dig through the clay? Is the clay full of organic material, rocks, bones? No, no not at all. <laughs> Not at all, the clay is quite clear of anything, anything. So you have this top layer of, uh, of brown soil with root and everything. Underneath comes a layer of some rocks and then it's consistent clay up to here. And then you get layers of sandstone clay, sandstone clay, sandstone clay until you dig down to the concrete which you cannot break which you feel that it's you cannot go deeper you know aha uh -huh. and so the concrete is underneath the uh, the layers of sandstone and uh, construction and, clay. And clay yes yes and you can hear the shovel ringing against that hard concrete yeah i mean you start hitting the big boulders you know and you cannot break that layer the layer of concrete yes 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 i hope that the volunteers will keep coming and we can move this out where are you from? Yeah, from Slovakia. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Slovakia. We really yeah, appreciate no your help.
<laughs> Actually, not no problem, my pleasure. I mean, the roots. What's your name? Andrei. Andrei, where are you from? Yes, from Slovenia. Slovenia? Yes. How did you hear about the pyramids? I stopped last year, coming from vacation uh, for three days with family. I liked it very much, so here I am again. Well, thank you so much for volunteering for the project. How do you feel? I feel great. But you've been working for hours. Yeah, but uh, the team spirit lifts you up. Ah, the team. Yeah. Let's get the team in the background. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Berenica. And where are you from? Uh, from Czech, Czech Republic. Oh, Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> and now. I'm here in my I'm body. <laughs> Do you feel tired? No, not at all. You're not tired? No. It's just the sun on my head, but uh, for the reason that we have some breaks in between, it's okay, it's fine. Do you enjoy your work? Very much, yeah. That's really a great work to do. Why do you, uh, why did you decide to volunteer? I was curious about this place and uh, about the energies I heard of. And um, in fact, I always dreamt of being part of an archaeological thing. So that was the right one for me. Kakoste, how are you? Fine. You? Very well. Well. <laughs> What's your name? Isabel. Isabel, where are you from? Argentina. Argentina? Yes. Did you come all the way from Argentina? Yes. Just for this? Just for this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes. She also was curious. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh, you were curious. Yes. About what's happening here. About the pyramid. How do you feel? I feel well, very well here. Yeah. Is the work okay or is it too hard? It's, it's hard, but it's okay. It's pleasure. <laughs> this is a, obviously some ancient project of some special spiritual divine uh, civilization. So we cannot understand it, the level of thinking and we should not now. So give up and relax and enjoy this energy. I want to say hello to everybody and I just want to present like a little bit uh, souvenirs and some important things that we have like here in the, our souvenir shop. Uh, baby main thing, it's our pyramid water, it's boiling pyramid water. Uh, that is water for who we get certificate from Institute for Bioenergy from Slovenia. It's actually water with a uh, very high um, energy potential. We can say also water with healing properties because it's a uh, very high bovis also. The most valuable liquid in our life is water. When exposed to the pyramid energy, to the best frequencies of electromagnetic fields, 28 kilohertz, ultrasound, 28 kilohertz, levitation frequency, the very low, extremely low frequency of 7.83 hertz known in the science as the original Schumann resonance, negative ions, the water changes the molecular structure. It becomes a healing water that vibrates very high. Those are daily creams, the soaps, body butters, also made with the Bosnian Pyramid water, some things that you can find only here in the main shop of Foundation Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Uh, those we have like energy stones, we have some samples from the, the oldest ceramic on the planet. Those are like the, the small stone spheres from Stone Sphere Zavidovici Place, it's made from original stone, stone spheres, from the broken stone spheres. Uh, my maybe favorite thing here, it's the small K2. It's a mega ceramic block, K2. It's made it like original, it's made it with quartz crystal inside and the quartz crystal in the powder. After uh, made, we put them uh, to, uh, again to K2 to charge them, to activate crystal again. It's mini K2. Those are some shirts with signs, with prints, like uh, about the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. We also have like some DVDs about the movies. This is like my favorite 
thing. It's actually Bosnian pyramid music. It's uh, the sounds, actually frequencies recorded in the Megalith K2, Sun Pyramid, Moon Pyramid, Tumulus. So we call it like healing frequencies. Also what we have like some music, the books. For this year we have like also in uh, Czech language, the France, German, English, Bosnian, everything is separated so soon we will have maybe more languages. Also we have like in the Turkish, in the Italian and uh, that is what we can offer for now, temporary. And hope so, so soon we'll, we will have like more things, more products, more souvenirs for you. It's cost like 10 euros or 20 km for one hour guiding tour with our official tour guide. It's not about reading about it, it's about experiencing it. It's about letting that journey of transformation in and connecting with it yourself. And this is truly becoming part with the international spirit. This is about the concept of new life. Instead of the one that's been dominant for the last 7,000 years with elites who control and manipulate us. It's time that we start with the places like the one that we have here in Visoko, Ravne complex. And another one in Italy, in Germany, in Israel, in Arab countries, in the US. We get organized and we show the way for the real future of humanity. Are human beings antennas like the pyramids are antennas? Yes. Resonators, I think, is a better word. To spread the light, not only here, but through the whole earth.